Uh, let's go to uh, Eric the Midget. Eric, you're on the air in Sacramento. Can you please not call me that? Oh, Eric the actor. Sorry. Thank you. Hmm. Um, I was first going to say that I talked to my friend Jim from Raleigh, and he said he enjoyed watching the taping that he was at. Yes, thank you. And then I also, judging from what you were saying about your mom, I'm just uh, wondering, has she ever been tested for dementia? No, oh, no, no. stop it. She's fine. She's so, my parents are so with it. I got to say, my dad's 89 and my mom's 84. 84. She said it, yeah. And uh, no, she's totally with it. I'm telling you, the, the only thing that they have, the issue is with the hearing. And when you can't hear stuff, you don't know what the fuck's going on. Right, but you were also saying that she was kind of forgetting things here and there. No, no, no. No, no she doesn't have any of that. Like, she's totally with it. I'm In telling fact, you. I said, you know, when was the last time I saw you? And your father said, the last time we saw you was at the gym. Right, yeah, no, he's sharp. <laughs> My dad's sharp, and even when he got up on stage, he was sharp. He was yeah. like... He you was know, so funny. You know, you know, when, like I brought my father up on stage, and I was like, not, a lot of times I'll get nervous, so I'll talk for him. But like I, I realized, I was able to just shut up and let him handle it. Yeah. And he handled it well. He was he was on his game, so it was good. It was not. It was really special, actually, for me to put my arm around my dad and bring him up on stage. I actually pushed him onto the stage. I, <laughs> I had to like crane him up there. Those steps are pretty uh, treacherous. But uh, yeah, that that would be interesting to see all that when it finally. Airing. Yeah, I think so. My strip tease too. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> you got a career. Yeah. Um it would be cool if I could some time maybe be able to come to one of the live shows this summer. Would that be cool? Be cool for you. <laughs> I I told you you could come to any of the live shows, Eric. I mean, but you gotta get there. That's the problem. Right, yeah. You know, you're you're never around. Yeah, we're not taking the live shows to Sacramento. Well, right. I know that. Um, but you're I invited. I mean, you're absolutely welcome. Just give me Thank a heads you. up and I'll get you a seat. You know what I thought was interesting? The splitting up of the whack pack. Oh, my God. First of all, <laughs> I get to this taping. Who's sitting right in the front row? Jeff the Drunk. That's what I heard. On and I was Wednesday. Like, he had like the best seat in the house, and, and he was in my eye line. And it was like, oh my God, I'm looking at Jeff the drunk? Really? How did he end up with the best seat in the house? Funny, because I was sitting behind him. Yeah. And I said I said the same thing. I said, how did Jeff, like, you, it's, you notice it as soon as you walk in, just in the front row. Right. And I saw, like, King of All Blacks was, like, in the balcony. And somebody said that he complained really loudly, and he oh, got moved. Oh, no. That's what the producer told me. That he, oh. He bitched and complained that he needed to be up front, and so they just put him up front. They wow. didn't want to deal with him, huh? Did well. You, did you see what was going on with him, by the way? Yeah, his, that his ass crack was hanging up? But there was a moment where you introduced him. Because what would happen is he can't sit down like a normal person. He's got to completely bend over. Right. Before he sits down. <laughs> so, so I saw it the whole show, but... At one point, you asked him to stand up, and he stood up. And when he sat down, you, you would turn around. The whole audience just goes, whoa, at once. I mean, it's so noticeable. <laughs> his asshole. He, he ass-cracked everybody. His yeah. pants are down. There's at least six inches of ass-crack showing before the whole thing starts. Uh, Jeff, are you aware that your whole ass-crack was sitting, <laughs> sticking out the whole time I was working? You know, I lost a lot of weight. Oh, did you? I didn't realize that my pants were going to be falling down like that. You know, and Sharon doesn't know our show real well, and um, she kept saying to me, what is wrong with that gentleman's arm? <laughs> so then I go, well, he had a, a driving accident when he was young, and it's, 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 he lost the complete use of it. And, I've t and then she goes, well, oh, really? And, and like, then I find myself explaining the whole Jeff the Drunk right. story. And I go, well, uh, you see, Jeff, he, re I've told him he should amputate that arm because it's useless, but he wants to hold on to it rather than put a hook or something there. <laughs> And she goes, well, why doesn't he get rid of it? I go, well, you know, I think he's hoping that one day they'll rehabilitate it or maybe they'll come up with a cure or something. But do I have that right, Jeff? Yeah. Yeah. So then, now I'm explaining the whole Jeff <laughs> and the sling and the arm and who he is. He He's definitely somebody people notice. Oh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> but I had a good time. Yeah. yeah. Now, well, now, I have a legitimate good question for Jeff. Have they ever tried 
stem cell with you for the arm to try to get it back? No. I don't know if that would work, Eric. Stem cell research, like like they inject stem right. cells and it will, <laughs> like a starfish. Grow him a new arm. Grow him a new arm or something, <laughs> or rehabilitate his arm. I don't know. I'm giving up hope on that arm. <laughs> and by the way, I got that seat. Hmm? I just walking up to and sitting down. Were you, you were not you sat any, Were you sat anywhere else before that, Jeff? Yes, I was sat in the balcony, and we and we got to the balcony, and the usher said to the people sitting down that they have to get up, and they're like, "We're we're not getting up. We just got here. We already got moved twice. If you could find a spot with five seats in a row, we'll move." And the usher said, "Well, okay, just." He, he, he turned to me and said, hold on, just sit tight, and I'll, I'll be right back. And with that, I looked at my friend Ethan. I said, come on, follow me. And we walked right to the front row, and I sat down. Yeah, well. Well, then, Jeff, you didn't just go sit down. No, right. he had a whole story. Yeah. There's a backstory. <laughs> you know, all I know is I sat down at the judging table, and right to my right is Jeff the Drunk. In other words, there's me. There's Howie, Sharon, <laughs> Howard, and then Jeff is almost had to, They should have handed him a buzzer. When you're a judge, you can only see two rows on your right or left, and right. Jeff was one of them. Jeff, Jeff was like at my side. He was my wingman for the entire experience. And then I said to somebody, is Jeff going to be sitting there like at night too? Or, or? And they go, no, no, he's only staying for the Thank afternoon. Thank goodness. You won't be with him yeah. all day. I think he was going through the DTs. I think he had to go out and get a drink. Because toward the end, weren't you complaining that you had to leave? Oh, no, it's the same when is it all? Oh, yeah, God. he goes up to the producers. And goes, when is this over? Because I said, well, he probably needs a drink. I wouldn't take it personally. <laughs> Jeff, you drink? You still drink, right? Um, yeah, but I didn't drink at all. No, not there. But I'm sure you went out and got a drink as soon as the taping was over. I didn't. No, no. Oh. I'm impressed. I went straight home. I got home at nine thirty at night. No, he. Uh, you know, he's sitting there, and he's, you know, here's a guy who never gets Can out of his... Can he do the stuff? Can he jump out of his seat and scream and no. make an X? Well, and that's all. the whole thing. When, when, <laughs> when they were doing the, you know, getting the audience all hyped up, and he had to get up and down, up and down, he's like, you know, a good 30 seconds behind everybody else. <laughs> but it wasn't... It, there, were, there were three women sitting behind me who were all pretty cute, and they were just, like, ready to vomit, because it was just nothing but his ass. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody. You were in a lot of tapings. You were. I went you, to. I went to the early one on Wednesday and Thursday. Yeah, they were great. They were great. Mm -hmm. I saw one of the best acts I've ever seen in my life. Which one? I, 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 without giving it away, me, uh, the dog act. Oh yeah, the dog. Yeah. I couldn't could could stop talking about it. I couldn't stop thinking about it the whole weekend. They were fantastic. That was great. That yeah. was great. All rescue dogs. But I saw. I saw a lot of other cool stuff. I saw. Like I really got into the the meat of what it's like when somebody sucks and they need to be told. Yeah. You know, it was some really interesting stuff I saw. You have a hard job. I know. Oh, it's... I mean, there was a moment that was just, just you know, there were people in the audience who were crying. Yeah. Oh, there, yeah. yeah. Something happened between yeah. me and one of the contestants, which I think will be very, very interesting when you see it. Uh, it was heartbreaking, just on every level. I know. Believe me. Did you hear somebody yell that? That was probably you. Uh, yeah, I made a kid cry. Yeah, that was pretty bad. Because you know what was really funny? Before it happened, I was like, you know, you had already axed somebody. Right. And I was like, ah, oh, that was fun. Now I want to see him do it to a kid. <laughs> well, you saw it. <laughs> see, see, I don't fuck around. And it's not pretty. No. See, that was my second day. The first day I saw you guys make a young girl cry as well. Yeah. And that was also, I mean, just, it was crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot. You know, they have a full-time psychiatrist that works. Is that true? I yeah. hope. Oh, yeah, backstage. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, Cause people, those people look pretty shaken up. Well, people audition, and then they, they've never, some people, are never told no in their lives, and then when they hear it, they freak. Yeah, they, they don't. They don't get it. It doesn't. There were it, a couple of people today. I was there who really look stunned. Yeah, and you can't even believe it. You're like, you really don't know you suck. See, I know, you actually said to one of them, "Are you serious?" Right. <laughs> <laughs> See, now I don't know if, how much they show after everything's done, but like I know when you watch American <laughs> Idol and that happens. My favorite part is like when they suck. 
And then the whole family, some uncles and cousins and everything, and they're like, they don't know what we right, know. Right. Oh, no, all that goes on. They tape all that backstage. That's why I said you're, you're seeing one portion of this. But the family is not doing th these people any No, help. no, they, they feed into the whole the whole lunacy of it. Well, that's what, you know, we're sitting, I was sitting next to your sister, and your sister said, doesn't she have a family? Doesn't she have some friends? <laughs> yeah, well, well, the one that I was talking about that was sort of heartbreaking, my younger son turned around to me. Yeah. And he said, he said to me, why would his parents let him go out yeah. there? Right. And I well, thought that was a really good observation for yes, a young kid to see. That's the truth. That's what I said. Well, I said, one of the things I said to Howie was the other uh, thing that they should have on the show is social services standing backstage to <laughs> save the, those children. Take kids away from their parents. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's crazy. The whole thing's crazy. I so, When I went, somebody said, what's so fun about it? I said, it's watching people who don't know that they're, they don't have any talent. <laughs> yeah, before, but it's also fun to watch people who don't know they're talented. Right. I've seen a couple of those people who are really uncertain that they're talented. Like I saw a guy in Austin who'd only ever performed in his room. And, right. And, and that was amazing. Right. Some people just don't know. Right. Right. Is that your Susan Boyle moment? Yep. Yeah. Hey, Jeff, thank you for uh, being there. You, you inspired me. <laughs> uh, thank very you. Very good, Howard. All right. Later. And then, Howard. Yes. Huh? be invited to the live show? Yeah, you can go to a live show. I will only accept front row seats. No, no, not during the live show. <laughs> <laughs> front row seats. I will only accept. I'll be ruined for anything else. <laughs> I know. All right, we'll talk, Jeff. Thank you. Okay, bye. But what I noticed was there was sort of a, a splitting up of the WAG pack. Yeah. And it seemed to me people you thought were okay wound up on one in one area and people you were a little concerned about wound up in another. Yeah, I had nothing to do with it. The producers did. Like they put Debbie the pet lady in the front row in the balcony because right. I, I think they were really concerned about yeah. her. Uh, but she behaved. And then a guy like ass napkin Ed, you know, he I heard he almost got thrown out. That's what I heard and I didn't know what he had done. He was drunk. He's sort of weird. And he kept I mean, yelling out of. his 819. Yeah, whatever that is. What I is still that? haven't figured out. It's somehow supposed to be a symbol for your name. Oh, right. Yeah. You know, I have to say that when I went outside or even inside and I saw all the members of the WAC Pack, you know, they really are like our wacky family. And, yeah. and as, even though I give Jeff a hard time, it was like really good to see all of them. And I, I hugged Debbie the Pet Lady at one session and I saw Marianne outside and, and King of All Blacks and Fred the Elephant Boy. Right. Ed, Ask Napkin Ed was out of control. Right. Really? He, he was, first of all, he was as drunk as I've ever seen him. And I was with my family, and he sort of grabbed me in a headlock, and he wouldn't let go. Not like a headlock, not like a headlock like he wanted to fight, like uh -huh. a headlock he wanted to be my buddy. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I was like, dude, you got to get off of me. And and I said to him, if you don't get off me, I'm going to fucking hit you. And he's like, <laughs> oh, what's the problem? What's the problem? Whoa, yeah, the down. problem is you're gross. <laughs> yeah, he sort of bummed me out because everybody else was like Debbie was all dressed up. She looked right. sort of good. Uh -huh. Yeah, no, she's she's an attractive. One. Everyone yeah, was even, disappointed in in her appearance because they wanted her to look crazy. Even she wore, Howie Mandel said she was impressive. Yeah, <laughs> she wore a really like a nice dress and heels. And, yeah, it was, sort of cool. yeah, it was he weird. Was shocked by her. Yeah, Howie was like, "Where? Where's Debbie? Where's Debbie? Where's Debbie?" So finally, Debbie shows up and he can see her and he goes, "Oh, she's, she's, she she's, was disappointed. Normal. She looked good. She actually looks normal." He goes, is it an act? I go, no. <laughs> Not, there's nothing like it. Uh, it's too crazy. Well, anyway, Eric, are we done, or, or is there some agenda today? Well, I was calling in because I received an offer, but it's something that Johnny this time, instead of me not wanting to do it, Johnny doesn't want to do it. What is the offer? It's to do a reality-based show for this whole fantasy island. Only thing is, this time there's no the plane, so I don't have, I would not have have to say that. And it's based in Vegas at a strip club that's also a restaurant. And for some reason, and Johnny doesn't want to do this. I have no idea what he's saying. I'm gonna, me neither. I, <laughs> I, I actually was thinking about taking a commercial break <laughs> and not getting into this, but. I think what Eric is saying, if I if I can be so bold as to try to interpret so we can get on with this, uh -huh. Eric got some sort of offer to be in Fantasy Island. You know the TV show Fantasy Island, I assume, sure. to play, you know, Tattoo or whatever that guy's name was. You know, the one who went, the plane, the plane. Right. 
but it's at a strip club, but it's a show called Fantasy Island, and Eric's thinking about doing it, but Johnny Frado doesn't want him doing it. I is think, this for TV, or is this just well, a Vegas thing? It sounds like a Vegas it would thing. Be, it would be Johnny and I on TV hosting this reality-based show called Fantasy Island, and it would be at a strip club in Vegas that's also a restaurant. What television station yeah. is that going to be on? <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, there's, I, I neither does anyone else. <laughs> I, I haven't gotten that detail, but I don't know if Johnny's on hold. Maybe he could. What does it pay? I don't want to get into a whole long thing about this, but if you don't want to do it, don't do it. Johnny doesn't want to do it. He wants to do it. No. Right, right. Johnny Johnny wants to do it. Eric doesn't want no, to do it. No, no. Johnny you doesn't. All right. Hold on. Robin has it right. Okay. Johnny, what, I'm getting sucked in, and I don't want to. Johnny, why why don't, whatever your opinion is, what is his opinion? He doesn't want to do it. What it is, what it is, is that these guys are building it. They're, they're building a strip bar in Vegas that's called Fantasy Island. That's like a restaurant thing, and they want Eric and I to be host, and they want to film it for a reality TV show. I don't want to do it because I'm very, very busy. Even though it's very important, Eric, I understand. It's not that important to me. So why can't Eric do it without you? Well, they don't want it. I don't know. I mean, it, it, I guess if they could find somebody else to be a me, then it, they would be fine. See, I think he's supposed to be the Mr. Rourke. Right. But why can't they get another guy to play Mr. That's Rourke? They want. Why don't they just get a guy in a white suit to be Mr. Rourke and let Eric be, uh... Well, let's go get the, oh, the one guy died, didn't he? That yeah, he did guy. die. Fucking guy. Ricardo Tommy, Montalban? Tommy, yeah. they, think that, they think that Johnny and I are a good team together, and that's why they want... Right. Hey, guys, i got to move along, and it's fascinating, you know, whether or not well, you're going to be... I we can work this out. Yeah, though. I don't know what to tell you to do, but to, please keep me posted. Workable. What? Hey, Howard, the Sam Tennyson stuff that was on while you were on vacation? Yeah. I listened to every inch of that. Yeah, he was, was the greatest. It, it, it was fucking, you know what, though? Go, I mean, I don't know if you, if you have to hear it at all. But the way you guys assembled it, it's fucking fantastic. Yeah, it's Sam. It's fucking fantastic, yeah. You know how many years he's dead already? I can't even imagine. Uh, someone, 20 years, right? 20, 20 years? years, yeah. Wow. 20 years of, he died. You know, it's crazy. And I, I don't know. I, guess... was out here and I was listening to it, and she said, "What are you doing? You're letting the three-year-old listen to it." And I told her, "I said this fucker hears more shit like this. This this radio ain't gonna hurt him. <laughs> There's more things that'll hurt him." All right, hey guys, I gotta run. Eric, Johnny, I gotta leave because I'm I'm late for a commercial break. You do have later, Robert. What? I do have I do have one more little. Oh, my God. God. Mm. Eric, you got to let me go. We, we have business to do. I, I got a radio show. You've been on for 25 well, minutes. I don't want to do it. Okay, then I'm going to see if Jim, oh, and tell Jim, if he lets you on, tell him about what High Pitch did. All right. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh -huh. Do you, you want to know what high pitch did for Eric? Oh God, I don't. I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm still on. Hmm. Hold on, I got to discuss this with Robin. I'm woozy. <laughs> well, how late are we? Yeah, well, it's not even late. It's just oh, I have so many things to get to, and it's, it's what high pitch did at the AGT taping. Uh, Is it a long story? <laughs> no. He, there was a family sitting in front of him, and he got an usher to make them leave and find other seats so he could sit down. All right. I got it. Hmm. What did he do, Robin? High pitch made some people move. High pitch made people move? Yeah, apparently so, according he, to Eric. He, he, I mean, this was his big day to, like, boss people That's around. That's right. It was like, I'm my high pitch Eric, and I want these people move so I can have their seats. Wow. No kidding. Yeah, Jim, Jim from Raleigh told me that. Wow. That's pretty um, That's pretty amazing. Well, I know he was in the front row. That actually is a good story. He was in the front row? Of the balcony. High pitch. Yeah. Wow. And he had people moved. According and, to Eric. And they listened to him. <laughs> <laughs> Who are the people listening to high pitch Eric? You have to move. Hi, Daddy.
All right, Eric, thank you for that story. It actually was good. Thank you. Uh-huh. <laughs> Every time I hear those sounds, I think of his acting. <laughs> I know. Jeez, woman. <laughs> <laughs> what was he talking about that fantasy island gig and if they're building a hotel and this is right. obviously some promotional thing and they somehow the people at the hotel or the strip club think they're shooting a reality show oh and you know none of it is <laughs> none of it's going to happen anyway i think johnny figured that out yeah yeah Johnny's like, I don't really want to be part of this. Yeah, I don't have time for nonsense. Right. <laughs> He's trying to make a living. <laughs> All right, look, I do have to take a break.